looks pretty cool, right? Looks like it's working, everything's going well, right? Yeah, no, that's an EM weapon. One of the four weapon types in Starfield. Now, EM weapons are easily the worst of the four, and that's for one reason. They don't actually do any damage, so it kind of is useless because what's the point of a weapon that doesn't do any damage? The good news is it does do something, and so you could use it as a kind of quick way to knock down as many enemies as you can, but the thing is you don't actually get any XP for that because you're not making kills. So today I thought, hmm, what if I could beat the game just using those? Yeah, obviously this is going to be a big no. I mean, you need to kill people in Starfield in order to progress the story, but that's where gun bashing comes into play. Yes, I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, this isn't the point of the run. If it's an EM weapon run, why are you gun bashing? Well, it's kind of a necessary evil. Believe me, I don't want to do it. You don't want to see it, but I have to do it in order to make the run work. Don't worry, I kept this to a minimum during the entire run. I just want to get that out of the way now. Anyways, as usual, I'm blabbering for far too long. Let's start the run. Okay, so loading in, I'm going down the elevator in Vectera. That's a planet where you're mining on, so you could get this weird rock. And as I continue through the tutorial where it teaches you how to shoot, smack, run, etc., I touch the funny rock, I have a trip, and then I'm put in the character creator. For some reason this time I decided my character would be Sal Volcano for an Impractical Jokers. Just don't question it, because I still am. Okay, so weird, bizarre characters aside, I start the story. And you actually are put into a fight sequence pretty early on. After you talk to Barrett, who's one of the guys from Constellation, who's basically one of the good guys, he tells everyone around you that he invited pirates over. Well, he didn't really invite them, but you get what I'm saying. Then fighting breaks out. I can't actually do anything because I don't have an EM weapon. Not saying that having one would help much, but still, I can't actually do anything right now. So I kind of just sat there. Occasionally, I try to move a barrel over to the pirates, so hopefully one of the miners could explode it. But it didn't really work. So really, I was kind of just sitting there, waiting for all the pirates to die. And it happened, I mean, the Minecrafters are surprisingly confident. After all the pirates were dead, I got to talk to Barrett again, and he handed me his watch which somehow fit my wrist. I'm then sent to the Lodge, which is Constellation's little base, and I made my way there, which is in New Atlantis, which is in one of the faction's territories. Anyways, once I got to New Atlantis, I finished up all the story stuff so I could get to the real stuff. Parents. You see, Starfield reintroduced traits, and one of the traits is kid stuff. Basically, your parents are still alive, and you can go and talk to them. Talking to them can trigger one of several different random encounters, but I'm trying to get a very specific one, and that's the whole reason I took the trait. In case you're wondering, my other two traits are extrovert and adoring fan, and that's because I could use those two to get a boost in oxygen. If you're worried about the adoring fan doing too much damage, don't, I gave him a rip shank as soon as I found him, so it made him pretty much useless. Before I left New Atlantis, I took all the weapons off my ship, and that's mainly because I don't want to accidentally attack anything with them, as they're not EM weapons. That's one of the reasons I chose this run, by the way. It's because you could get EM weapons on both your ship and your person, so I thought it'd be a nice run to do. Yes, there is a small fighting sequence at the beginning of the game in the ship that you can't use EM weapons for, but I barely mention that because there's no point in it, because there's no way to skip the thing. Anyways, another thing about Starfield is companions are forced on you a lot. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just in runs like these, it makes it kind of hard to keep the run going, I guess. Either way, it came into my advantage here, I guess. Mainly because I can't actually continue the story yet. I wanted to, but I couldn't. The next quest in the story, you have to go to Mars, talk to a dude, and then he tells you to go to Venus, where you listen to something, and then that tells you to go to Earth. Once you go to Earth and run around for a bit, you find a holotape that tells you to go to Neptune. Basically, the whole reason you're doing this is because you're looking for a dude who has one of the artifacts that you're looking for. Kind of a wild goose chase, but oh well. Okay, here's where the real problem shows up though. In order to get to the dude, you have to destroy a ship. You can do this with EM weapons, but I don't have any and none of the shops are selling them because I'm not a high enough level. So essentially, I've hit a brick wall. Even if I did figure it out and somehow got the ship into poor enough condition where I could board it, I wouldn't have an EM weapon to continue the fight inside, and then you need to kill some ecliptic mercenaries while you're in there. So basically, yes, I've in a sense hit a true brick wall. I cannot go further anymore. Not all hope was lost though. The good news is this is a Bethesda game, there are side quests everywhere. I could use that to boost my levels, and I could use that to get new EM weapons. I decided I might as well go to the Freestar Collective's quest, as it's usually one of the easiest quest lines. It wasn't this time though, mainly because I couldn't actually kill anything. The good news is I still have Sarah, who accompanies you during the Constellation quest, and since I haven't completed it, she's still with me. This means I could use her to kill anybody I need to. I really didn't want to, but at this point I was stuck, like well and truly stuck, so I had to. In order to start the Freestar Collective's quest, you need to go to a bank where it's being robbed, and basically you need to talk to the sheriff that's there. He tells you that the bank's being robbed, which is a little obvious, 
and then you have to go defuse the situation. Usually you could use a charisma check to pass it, but I'm dumb and I wasn't able to. So I had to take Sarah inside so she could deal with the hostages, well, the people holding the hostages. It took a little while as the companions in this game are kind of slow to fight. They have this new AI, which basically means they actually try to hide from gunfire. But the thing is when both the companions and the enemies are doing that, they kind of just hide from each other the entire time. This means even with super unarmored enemies, it takes forever for someone to go down. Normally, this is actually a good thing as it makes it feel like the enemies aren't just running towards your bullets. But in this case, it's one of the worst things that could happen in this run. Either way, after a bit, Sarah clears out the bank. I free the hostages, I take all the credit, and I made a deputy. I then have to do a radiant quest. Okay, now these are normally the easiest quests in the game. It's like go here, kill him, and you're done. Here's the thing, no weapons, one companion, low heals. Yeah, I wasn't getting anywhere with that. I went to a random moon and I was like, this should be pretty easy, this should be nice. No, there was House of Rune cultists there, which are one of the strongest base enemies in the game, and I had to wait for Sarah to take out a whole group of them. Not to mention the legendary one she has to fight at the end in order to actually complete the mission. This took ages. I ran out of healing so fast that I actually had to keep reloading the area just to heal me. Overall, it was a rather unfortunate occurrence. And by now I was feeling pretty upset with the run. I thought it was kind of gonna fail, but I stuck with it because I figured there'd be something I could do to fix it. And when I actually got a weapon, it should work out. Speaking of weapon, after I finished that quest, I went to Neon, another town in another planet, because I remembered there was an EM weapon lying down in one of the businesses there. I searched a lot of towers and looked everywhere for the weapon, and I didn't find it, and annoyingly enough, the entire time, it was right under my nose. I didn't figure this out till later, so yeah, that was nice. Anyways, after I returned to Aquila, which is where the Freestar Collective is headquartered, I turned in the quest, which leveled me up, and got me to the point where I could buy the cheapest EM weapon for my ship. Finally, some progress. I also decided to suck up my pride, and Google where to get an EM weapon, and yes, I figured out it was literally right there. The only business I didn't check in Neon was Ryujin, and Ryujin is the one that had the EM weapon. In fact, there's multiple, multiple modded ones. I did have to steal it, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Neon's kind of a small city in the game. You don't have to go there that often. So having a little bounty there wasn't really a problem. Well, I'm glad that that was all over because now I could start the run in full swing. By that, I mean, I went to that one dude's ship. I shot it with EM weapons until it broke down. I boarded, I stunned, then gun bashed every ecliptic mercenary in there. And then I freed the dude. He then gave me the artifact, and that finished one of the longest encounters for a quest ever, even though it's one of the easiest and earliest in the game. Okay, now that that little rant is over, I can finally start with the fun part of the game. The part where I can actually fight back and play Starfield. Okay, so once you get back to the lodge after returning the artifact, you're given a bunch of quests at once. You can either find Barret, you can do something else that I can't remember, or Space Cowboy. Yeah, Space Cowboy won. Uh, it's not really a surprise. Anyways, for the start of this quest, it's pretty simple. You go to Aquila City, which I've already been to. You go into the bank, which I've already cleared out, and you look for some maps. The maps aren't in the bank, so you have to see Cowboy's dad in order to figure out where the maps are because he has the maps. Well, when I got there, Sam gave his dad one of the most condescending looks I've ever seen in my life. Like seriously, what the hell is that? What could this man have done to possibly warrant that? Clearly offended by the look his son gave him, Space Cowboy Sr. ran away with the maps. Well, he didn't run very far, he just went to his room. It's now my job to go and talk to him, and so I did, and this is kind of the first time in the story that you have to deal with a speech check. Now, I actually really like the speech checks in Starfield. They feel a lot better than just clicking a button and waiting for something to happen. But the thing is, well, they're completely broken. The whole way the speech checks work is basically you have a number at the bottom, and each little... I guess widget in the conversation can add a certain number, but each one is more difficult or less difficult. It kind of works like all that speech checks like that. But the thing is, it's so easy to just ace every speech check. Like for example, I did a lot of speech checks in this run, as obviously I can't really kill that many things. So if I avoid combat, that's better. And so I did roughly 30 speech checks this run. Out of those 30, I only failed two. I have no points invested in speech. Anyways, I obviously passed the speech check, that's why I'm saying this. Space Cowboy Senior gave me the maps, and it turns out the empty nest, where the artifact is hidden, is not all that far from Aquila City. The main issue is that it's in Shaw Gang territory. The Shaw Gang is the same gang that held up the bank, and they're basically a bunch of small time criminals. By now, I've done a small side quest which unlocks the gun vendor inside the well inside New Atlantis, and basically, he sells the Brawler, which is a unique Equinox that's automatic and does EM damage. It's it's miles better than the previous EM weapon I was using, so it was able to carry me straight through the entire quest with the Shaw Gang. On top of that, EM weapons work surprisingly well with the way Starfield forces companions on you, 
as the companions can take the people out when they wake up. That's if they wake up though. 90% of the time I knock someone out, they stay out for a very, very long time. Anyways, getting the artifact isn't too hard, you just grab it after a bit, but once you leave the cave that the artifact is in, you're approached by Shaw, the leader of the Shaw gang. Shaw isn't that intimidating, but I know for a fact I'm about to get ambushed by Ashtoth, which are the weird dog aliens that attack you on Aquila. Because of this, I decided to pass the speech check with Shaw. Of course, I could do that because this is Starfield, remember? And then that gets Shaw's help against them. This is also where I found what was going to be my main method of fighting. It's really slow, it's super inefficient, but it works and that's all that matters. I can knock something out, search the area for a bit, pick up an explosive barrel, plop it on top of the thing, walk backwards, and then shoot the explosive barrel. It's a process, sure, but it gets results. Later on, I ended up unlocking an EM shotgun, which I used to kind of skeet shoot the barrels. So that worked out a lot better, but that's still way later. So for now, that was my tactic for damaging things. Despite the fact everyone seems to be afraid of the Ashtas, they're not all that bad, so I was able to breeze through them and then make my way back to the lodge to add another artifact. When I get back to the lodge, it turns out Barrett's still missing, and his trial for murder is long over, so he should be back. He isn't, so I have to head back to Vectera, and it turns out he's been kidnapped by pirates. Lovely. Well, apparently Barrett's intelligent enough to leave behind some messages, so I just follow those until I find him and the pirates. And yeah, it turns out he's been abusing the game's easy speech checks as well. Him and the pirates are just chatting it up, so when I get there, I don't actually have to do too much, except abuse another easy speech check. Well, after a brief chat with the pirates, I take off, and now I have to go talk to Vlad at the Eye, who's one of Constellation's big buff dudes that does something. He also talks like a pirate. I feel like I should mention that. Anyways, Vlad tells me to go find some, I guess, minor artifacts. They're not really too much of a big deal, as these are kind of the radiant quests in the game. There are a lot of artifacts, so some of them are kind of like this, but for the most part, most of the artifacts are a story. Anyways, a good chunk of the minor artifacts were really easy, except for one which of course had Varun Zealots. Luckily, once again, I have the brawler, so I'm able to stun most of them and run straight through. And I gotta say, I'm actually enjoying this. Despite being an EM weapon, the brawler makes a surprisingly fun run and gun. Normally when I do a run and gun, I'm gonna wanna use a shotgun or some other high powered AR. But the thing is, because most enemies don't have any EM protection, they go down regardless. I'm not killing them, but I am stunning them for long enough where it actually makes a difference. I'm actually beginning to appreciate the EM weapons, which is something I was not expecting. Anyways, after I grabbed all the minor artifacts, it was time to get back to the story. It's time for the quest called All That Money Can Buy. And you're doing just that, you're buying an artifact. Of course, nothing's that simple, so after paying off the guards, bartender, and door, I leaned on that one dude that was selling the artifact. He literally ran away from it, and then guess what? The sketchy guy who did the sketchy deal did something sketchy. Surprising, I know. Basically, the guy that sold you the artifact stole the artifact from some dude named Slayton. Slayton wants it back for some reason, so now I have to fight him for it. Although it should be pretty easy to get it out of Neon, you can't because your ship's been impounded, so now you have to go fight Slayton for it. Literally, like you actually, you go to his office and you beat the crap out of him. I mean, fair enough, I suppose. Math works out. Anyway, Slayton is sort of a mini boss, but he's not all that tough, as he's kind of like General Oliver from New Vegas, where he has a lot of backup and that's about it. But the thing is, his backup is in the form of like traditional guards, and guards don't really have good EM defense. I could stun them after a few hits from an automatic weapon, and then killing Slayton is just a matter of gun bashing him. After cleaning up some of the leftovers, I left Neon, and that's where you're ambushed by the Starborn for the first time. Now the Starborn are important story people, and the one that attacks you right now is the Emissary. Basically he ambushes you with his ship, demands that you hand over the artifact, and if you don't he just starts shooting. I just went through the normal option of just trying to run away, and my game glitched out and he just shot me down. For some reason it wasn't letting me jump away. Second go around I could actually fast travel, so I got away from him, got to the lodge, and put the artifact in. After this I have more constellation busy work in the most literal sense, as I have to do short sighted which basically I go and fix up the eye. It's really simple, you just go around touching tools, and magically the eye fixes itself. The real reason this is here is so that it'll split up your crew for a later quest. Anyways, while you're at the eye, Vlad tells you to take Barret and go to the scow, which is basically like some collector's ship. The collector, of course, has an artifact, so you have to get it from him. Normally during this mission, you just use Barret to talk your way through things, but an even better approach to doing it is land at the ship, threaten everybody, beat the crap out of the collector, and then he lets you steal everything. I'm not even kidding, if you do this, you are allowed to steal everything and it won't actually be marked as contraband, so the next time you land in any sort of planet, it won't be taken away from you. I did this so I got a bunch of free loot, not to mention the artifact, so that was nice. Picking up the artifact still gets you a bounty in the UC. Anyways, after I got out of Gru's ship, by the way the collector sounds exactly like Gru, you get a message from the Eye basically saying that the Hunter, one of the Starborn, 
showed up and attacked everybody and is now coming to the lodge. Now this is where Starfield offers one of its kind of weirder quests where the person you leave behind at the lodge will get killed. That's if you choose to leave them behind, mind you. On the other hand though, in the eye someone is dying and Vlad will mention who it is and if you don't go there, they will die. The two people for me was Sam on the eye and Barrett in the lodge. Yeah, sorry Barrett, space cowboy. As funny as it is, the real reason I'm taking Sam is because he has a level four piloting skill and once I get my upgraded ship, that will come in handy as it actually speeds up your ship. Anyways, once I got to the eye, I realized it was more of an attention thing, as when I got there, Sam just magically fixed himself. Well, after chatting with everybody on the eye, I returned to the lodge, and it turns out, yeah, Barrett got shot up. Boohoo. Anyways, they're still missing Noelle, the weird science lady, and that's because she took the artifacts and ran away. Luckily, she didn't get too far, she's just in the basement of Constellation, and once you start talking to her, the hunter shows up. This first fight with the hunter literally means nothing, like I have to run from him, so running through his little attack isn't too bad, especially since there are a lot of targets going around. Mind you, you're running straight through New Atlantis, so yes, there's a lot going on, but the only real attack going on there is the one towards my ping. Anyways, after me and the rest of Constellation ran away, I got sent back to the lodge for some reason because apparently it's the safest place ever, even though it just got attacked. I then was told to put the artifacts either in an outpost or in my ship, and I don't have time for outposts, so yeah, ship it is. Well, with the artifacts in a kinda safe position, I went back to the lodge, and it turns out Colt Dude's Colt might be able to help. Yeah, well, it turns out his entire religion is built upon some dude's coordinates, so I just went to those coordinates, and yeah, there's some dude's resting place. Well, some dude has a puzzle you need to solve, but luckily I've already beaten the game, so I've just solved it. Some dude's home then leads to some dude's coordinates. This is a different set of coordinates, mind you. And then after following those coordinates, I'm given another set of coordinates. It's kinda weird, not gonna lie. Well, after all of that, I finally find some dude, and it turns out that dude is the hunter. Well, this is the sort of big twist in the game, and it definitely sounds anticlimactic like this. Basically, the hunter and the emissary are both variants of different people you've already met. Yeah, it's a multiverse crap. Anyways, the hunter is the cult dude, but the cult dude's leader, not that cult dude. You know who I'm talking about. And the emissary is Barrett. Yeah, the very same Barrett I let die. After talking with them a bit, you learn that they're kind of at war, and you have to choose to side with one of them, or you could just not and kill both of them. After I was finished up with the Starborn, I went back to the Lodge, because you always have to go back to the Lodge, and I broke the news to everybody. Then Vlad completely kills the moment by telling you that you need more Radiant quests to do. Great. These ones aren't too bad as it's only one, and then there's another one after that that's actually pretty cool, and my favorite quest in the game, but that's not important right now, because what is important is Inheritance. Yes, I finally got it, the whole reason I took the kid stuff trait was because there's a special event you can get if you visit your parents a lot where they give you a ship. The ship, the Wanderwell, sorry, the Wanderwell, is my personal favorite ship in the game. It's fast, it's got ballistic weapons, it's got EM weapons, it is perfect. And I have to take away everything it has just so I could fit three dumb EM weapons on it that are virtually useless. Either way, I got it and I'm happy. Anyways, the first artifact is, once again, like I said, a Radiant Quest, not too much, not too big of a deal. I just killed some random mercenaries and picked it up. The second one, on the other hand, yeah, that's Entangled, the best quest in the game. Okay, so basically the quest starts with you picking up a satellite signal, basically broadcasting that, oh no, everybody's dead, please help me. You then go to the place that you received the signal from, and it turns out everybody is not dead, everybody is very much alive, and they're very confused as they didn't even send out a signal. While the security guard is giving you the grand tour, you literally blip through the multiverse, Loki style. This is where you land in sort of the rune facility, and this is where you receive the signal from. Basically, you're kind of fast traveling between two different universes, one of them where a facility is ruined and one of them where the facility is intact. Basically, it's just this huge puzzle quest where you gotta figure out which universe you gotta go to. There's a lot that happens in this one, and it's a really long and fun quest. But sadly, there's not too much to talk about about it, because it's pretty simple. Well anyways, the final room, you get to choose who you're gonna save, and I chose the intact facility, and that's for one reason. Robots are the main enemy in theirs, the main enemy in the other one are these weird scorpion alien things, and unlike the robots, I can't do damage to them. EM weapons do damage to robots and turrets, by the way. There wasn't really any purpose to mentioning that till now, because there aren't that many robots and turrets in the game. Well, after turning off the drill, because that's what they were doing to the artifact, because of course you find a mysterious powerful artifact, you dig a drill straight into it. That is not bad advice, that is extremely sound advice that you will follow. Anyways, I picked up the artifact, I went back to my ship, 
and it's time to go to Earth. The second to last quest in the game takes you back to Earth where you go to an old NASA project and it kind of wraps up the story. Basically what you learn while you're traveling through there through different hollow tapes and terminals is that the dude who invented grab drives and the dude who made space travel possible came in contact with a starborn. The thing is, he assembled the artifacts and that's what destroyed Earth. The main thing is though, it sort of created this paradox thing because the dude who discovered the grav drive only knows about the grav drive because a future version of himself told him about the grav drive, but the future version of himself only knew about the grav drive because he had already invented it. But that's because he got told how to invent it. It's sort of like this impossible situation, but that's what really sort of ties the story together as it's the whole emissary's argument about how Starborn are bad, even though he's a Starborn. Anyways, while you're in the facility, a grip of Starborn will attack you, like a lot of them, and this is where I learned possibly the worst thing I could have. The major, most powerful Starborn you encounter do not take EM damage. The only thing that came close to this discovery in any of my runs was Fallout 76 with the Syringer when I found out Dr. Blackburn doesn't take bleed damage. It's just, it's absurd. This weapon, which isn't great, but it's been doing it's been doing the job throughout the entire run. Craps out on me now. I was upset, but I kept going. The only thing I could do with the Starborn is run, so run I did right out of the facility straight into the Hunter's waiting arms. This is where the game makes you make your final decision whether or not you're going to side with the Hunter, Emissary, or yourself. I chose the Hunter, normally I'd choose myself, but the thing is the Hunter is way stronger than the Emissary, and fighting them both would be suicide. By taking the Hunter, I'm making the final boss fight so much easier, and I'm not afraid to admit that I need help. Either way, that's the final quest before the final quest, but before I actually went to go finish the game, I decided to make some last upgrades. Plus, I had to do a job for the Hunter. This last job for the Hunter is to go kill Keeper Aquilus, who is Colt Dude Senior. Yes, it's the very same Keeper Aquilus who is the Hunter. So basically, the Hunter wants you to kill the variation of him that's in this universe. This is where you kind of get the last piece of the puzzle, because when you kill Keeper Aquilus, you find out he was actually a Starborn. That's why he was able to point you in the right direction. Well, anyways, you might have noticed that I killed him with a pacifier, which is a shotgun. Yes, I finally crafted an EM shotgun. In fact, I made two. One pacifier and one old earth shotgun. I didn't actually get to use the old earth shotgun because it does virtually no EM damage. That's fine. It's not like I wanted to use my favorite gun anyways. Anyways, the pacifier can actually put in some pretty good work. And the big thing is it's still a shotgun, so yeah, it's time for some skeet shooting. I could finally use barrels to take out enemies in bulk. Before I could do that though, I had a whole ship fight with the Starborn, and at first I was so scared of the segment. I wasn't sure if I'd even be able to take them out, in fact I installed an emergency rocket launcher onto my ship just in case things flew south. But it went right in the best way possible. The Hunter shows up. He is able to destroy all your enemies, and although normally he'd be outmatched without you, the Wanda well can actually put in some pretty good work, as I'm able to stun all their engines and just leave them floating in there, and then the Hunter can take them out. Basically, this means that one of the hardest sections in the game became super easy because this run finally, finally had a strong suit. You have no idea how happy that made me. I was so scared of that segment during the entire run, I thought that would be just the run ending scenario where it's just it's all over, but I was able to make it work. Well after destroying all the Starborn ships, you land at the buried temple which is just some planet that has a temple in it. You're then put in a sort of boss rush with a bunch of Starborn. Number one is Guardian blah blah blah, who basically duplicates himself a lot. He's not too bad as there are so many explosive barrels in his area, I was actually able to take him out almost completely with explosive barrels. Well, of course, the Hunter and Adoring Fan helped a bit. The next Guardian is a type of Necromancer who keeps picking up Ecliptics, but that wasn't really the problem. I can gun bash the Ecliptics after stunning them, which makes them pretty easy to take out. No, the problem was he was teleporting everywhere. Like, I'm not kidding, everywhere. He would show up some thousand yards away from me, and I'd have to run all the way over there just to get him. On top of that, by the time I'd get there, I could get two hits in, and he'd teleport all the way back. This meant I was running back and forth for so long, and it was super annoying. And this isn't supposed to happen. It's never happened, yet it happened here. Right when I wanted to record the game, it happened right there. It's fine, I took him out, and then I was able to move on. The next couple Starborn are a little underwhelming. They don't do all that much, I think one changes the gravity in the room and the other just shoots explosives. Not all that bad, I mean, the Hunter and Adoring Fan took out one, and I was able to gun bash the other one, so all things considered, they were pretty weak. Then it's time for the final Starborn Guardian, and he is the worst. He duplicates you. That's right, you have to fight clones of yourself. And that doesn't sound too bad, except I was holding my EM shotgun when I was doing that, 
and EM weapons don't work on the player like they do on enemies, instead they actually burn away your health, kind of like rads and follow. Well, this was terrible as my EM shotgun does a lot of damage, so I was in pretty big trouble the entire time. On top of that, since I sided with the hunter, he also clones him. Luckily, I could actually stun all the clones, and after stunning them, he's kind of useless. After once again pounding someone else's skull in with the butt of a gun, I was finally ready to beat the game. Alright, the final boss fight with the emissary is a lot. I could have talked him down because once again broken easy speech checks, but I didn't. Instead, I decided I'd see this through to the end. Now, the emissary pretty much has everybody's ability when you take the hunter along. He clones himself, he teleports around, he raises the dead. I don't think he could shoot gravity balls, which is a good thing because that's the hunter's thing, and he just destroys you with that. So that's the main reason I chose the hunter. That doesn't mean the emissary is something to laugh at though. He's actually pretty difficult. The main issue is I think you have to take out all of his clones of himself, which is pretty challenging as they all have similar health bars. Well anyways, the good news is you're constantly teleporting around through different rooms in the game, and some of those rooms have a lot of explosives. So for the first like four or so rooms, I was actually able to do a huge amount of damage just with explosives. On top of that, even though he can't be stunned, Using my shotgun on him still knocks him back a bit, as it's still like hitting him with a shotgun, just without the damage. Although things flew south later, when I made it to the final room. The final room is basically just some random starship, and the worst news about it is no more heals, no more barrels, and for some reason the hunter and adoring fan disappeared again. I was fighting the emissary for a while in that room, and I took so much damage, and I got- I died a lot. This is one of the only places I died in the run, and I kept dying there. But eventually, I was able to take out the emissary by gun bashing him. Not the way I would have liked to end the game, but it's over and that's all that matters. After I looted the emissary, I said my final goodbyes, touched the last artifact, finishing the game, and proving yeah, you can beat Starfield with EM weapons. Man, that was a lot. That was a pretty chunky run for what it was. I rarely have weapon restricted runs sort of fly this off the rails. Normally, they're pretty easy, you know, they're pretty straightforward. This time, this one wasn't. I'm happy with it though, for a first Starfield run, this was a great one. Anyways, I don't have too much to say as this was already a lengthy run and my voice is getting kind of tired, so I think I'm just going to end this one. Regardless, that's all I have time for in today's video. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing, otherwise I'll catch you in the next one. Cause maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me, as after all, you're my wonder well.